Today, I want to cover a crypto that does not get the respect that it deserves because there's so much rich history embedded in this crypto. And we're talking about Litecoin. It is a fork of Bitcoin. It was created in 2011. And believe it or not, there was a fork of Litecoin and that became Dogecoin. You might have heard of Dogecoin. It is now the fifth largest cryptocurrency project, whereas Litecoin currently stands as the number 24 largest crypto project. Now, Litecoin is very, very similar to Bitcoin, obviously because it was a fork of it, but it was created to be a faster and also have lower fees option as opposed to Bitcoin. That makes it better for small everyday transactions. And believe it or not, it's accepted by merchants worldwide. We will actually cover that a little bit later. So who exactly was the inventor behind Litecoin and why was it forked in 2011? Well, Charlie Lee, brilliant guy, he went to MIT, he got his bachelor's degree there, he got his master's degree there. Later on, he was actually a software engineer at Google, and then he also became eventually a director of engineering at Coinbase, and he's also a poker enthusiast, which is great because finally these stupid poker chips on my table can actually fit into the theme of the video. So I mentioned that Litecoin is a lot faster than Bitcoin. So how much faster is it and how does it do it? Well, Litecoin is actually four times faster than Bitcoin. Why? Because the actual block time for Litecoin is two and a half minutes versus Bitcoin's block time, which is 10 minutes. What is block time? It is the time that it takes for the block of transactions to actually be solidified. This is where there's addresses embedded in there, the time, the transactions. When I say addresses, I mean the wallet address. And then that block is solidified. And then obviously the next block starts to be created and it's connected cryptographically to actually the block preceding it. That's what makes the blockchain the blockchain, right? So a block is basically the foundational unit of storage for information. And in Litecoin's case, it takes four times faster than Bitcoin. This 4X is actually a common theme throughout Litecoin versus Bitcoin, because as we'll cover later, when we get into the tokenomics of Litecoin, you will see that it actually has a max maximum supply that is four times that of Bitcoin. So let's now talk about fees. If you take a look at the website, the Litecoin Foundation claims it's just one penny per transaction. The reality is it can be anywhere between one cent and 10 cents, depending on the congestion of the network. But on average, it hovers around two to four cents. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is a dollar to six dollars per transaction, and it can also spike to well over ten dollars, especially during times of congestion. Now, just like Bitcoin, Litecoin uses the proof of work. And there's actually a very interesting story here, because what really separates Litecoin from Bitcoin is the hashing algorithm. And that is because Lee created a new hashing algorithm called the script hashing algorithm. Why did he do that? Well, something that happened is initially when there were miners mining for Bitcoin, they were using their PC, they were using their regular computers, and the compute power was powerful enough to solve these advanced puzzles and they would get rewarded. But very quickly, there was new updated chips and hardware called an ASIC, and everybody started mining with ASICs, and then it became really difficult for just your average person with a computer to be able to mine for Bitcoin and actually solve these hashing algorithms and receive a reward for solving the problem. And so Lee wanted to actually level the playing field once again. And that worked for just a short period of time that once again, computers could actually compete and you don't need these powerful ASIC machines, but obviously brilliant, smart people, they rig things. And so very quickly, ASICs and hardware and software was rigged so that it can go ahead and solve the script hashing algorithm. And once again, regular computers couldn't really mine effectively and compete with ASICs. Now, something else that's really 
really interesting in this story is that Doge, I mentioned, was actually a fork of Litecoin. And since it also uses the script hashing algorithm for Doge in order to mine Doge, there's actually something called merge mining that can occur where the miners can actually mine both cryptos, so both Doge and Litecoin simultaneously. This makes it more efficient for small miners. They don't have to spend more compute power or energy to mine for them separately. They can do merge mining. Here's something really interesting about Litecoin, and you can experiment with this for yourself. If you search online, you will see that a lot of publications, even really noteworthy ones, resources that everyone uses when studying crypto, they claim that that Litecoin is the second crypto ever created. Litecoin is actually the third oldest crypto project. The second one is actually Namecoin. And Namecoin probably deserves a video of its own because it has a place in history in the crypto space. I know it's not really well known anymore, and I doubt you can even buy it on one of these centralized exchanges. But believe it or not, it still does exist. But that's a video for another time. The last little factoid I wanna add about Litecoin before we dive deeply into the tokenomics of Litecoin is I wanna mention that it was actually the first crypto to demonstrate a Lightning Network transaction in 2017. If you're not familiar with the Lightning Network, I'm actually going to detail it a bit in this video, but I'm also likely going to dedicate an entire video to it. If you want me to do that, mention it in the comment section. But without further ado, let's dive into the tokenomics of Litecoin. So it's super important to understand the economic structure and distribution model that governs how Litecoin operates. So as you can see here in the platform I'm using is CoinMarketCap to do a bit of research here, you can see that Litecoin has a market cap of 7.67 billion and that actually makes it the 24th largest crypto of all of the crypto projects as of today, which is December 30th, 2024. We can also see that there's a maximum supply here of 84 million Litecoin. Remember, Bitcoin has a total supply of 21 million and Litecoin is exactly 4x of that. However, similar to Bitcoin, not all of the Litecoins have been mined yet, and that's why we see the circulating supply actually much lower than the maximum supply. The circulating supply sits at 75.36 million. Over time, this will increase, and similar to Bitcoin, you can expect Litecoin to be fully mined by 2142, as opposed to Bitcoin that is expected to be fully mined by 2140. Now, this is due to the geometric progression of having, but over time, the block reward will approach zero for Litecoin. And again, it's gonna take over a hundred years, so I don't think any of us will be alive when the last Litecoin is mined. And for those that are curious, the mining reward is halved every 840,000 blocks for Litecoin, which means approximately every four years. So that being said, let's now take a look at what the price of Litecoin has been doing. So you can see that the all-time high occurred on May 9th, 2021. And this is actually something I want to point out because right here it says that the all-time high is 412. But if we look at the chart here, we can see that the chart stops around $354. How does that make any sense? Well, that's because you're looking at a line chart. It always rounds off. Think of the sharp corners and it just rounding them off so it doesn't show the true highs or lows for that you want to turn on the candlestick chart and here we will actually see that it did reach that 412 dollar mark on May 9th and the all-time low actually happened in 2015 and just imagine if you caught it near its lows at like two dollars and then sold around four hundred dollars when it hit its highs you're talking about a 200x 
That's incredible. So now I'm gonna change this back to a line chart because I actually want to compare it to Bitcoin because again, they're quite similar. And I wanna show you something here. If you go to the one year mark, you'll actually see the percentages and how it's changed over time. And what we could learn here is that Litecoin has actually moved similarly to Bitcoin, but not at the same magnitude in the sense that if we put a hundred dollars into Litecoin, and if we put a hundred dollars into Bitcoin exactly a year ago, you will see that Bitcoin has returned 124%, whereas Litecoin has only returned 40%. If we take a look at the one month chart, you will see that Bitcoin and Litecoin are actually not following each other very, very closely. This was actually a surprise for me to see. I thought at least the trajectory of the charts would be similar, but this looks like completely two different cryptos that are not mimicking one another at all. Now, if you're doing research on cryptos, I highly recommend that you take a look at the analytics on CoinMarketCap because here you can learn a lot about who is holding the crypto, what the whale holdings look like, and if people are hodling it, if they're just cruising through, if they're trading it in less than a month, if they're trading it between one month and 12 months, if you'd like me to make a tutorial on how to use the coin market cap analytics and some of the other analytical tools to go ahead and decide which cryptos might be wise to invest in or which have yellow flags or red flags, please leave a comment in the comment section and I will aim to make a video about that. Also, this is a really cool feature on CoinMarketCap. We can simply click script here and it will actually show the top script hashing algorithm cryptocurrencies. And you could see here that Doge is actually above Litecoin, which is so interesting because Doge was a fork of Litecoin. And it's very rare that a fork starts to actually perform a lot better than the original. It has happened before, but it is really interesting to note. And it's not just performing a little better than Litecoin, it's actually performing a hell of a lot better. It's sitting at $47 billion market cap versus Litecoin's 7.7 .7 billion. And it is currently the number seven largest crypto project, whereas Litecoin is number 24. Now I've mentioned that the Lightning Network is a layer two solution that works on top of Litecoin and actually Bitcoin as well to enable faster and cheaper transactions. If you want me to do a tutorial explaining the Lightning Network in detail, I'd be more than happy to do so. So if you'd like that, you know what to do. Just mention it in the comment section and I will aim to make a tutorial on it. But to sum it up, the Lightning Network makes Litecoin faster, cheaper, and more scalable by processing most transactions off of the actual blockchain while still settling final balances securely on the main blockchain. So they leverage the security of the blockchain technology of Litecoin, but are still able to make the transactions go through a lot faster, make the fees a lot less, and make it more scalable, which is great for cryptos, especially these dino coins like Litecoin. Here on the Litecoin Foundation website, we can actually see that the average transaction fee is just a penny, even though in doing my research, it's actually a bit more, maybe because of the congestion of the network. They say that they do a $6 billion 24 hour volume and that there's around 200,000 transactions per day. These are some really, really impressive stats. If you're interested in learning about the nitty and gritty of these projects, I highly recommend that you navigate to their actual websites because they actually do a good job at explaining and having resources here. If you're curious about any aspect of Litecoin, you can get it straight from the source, not from some YouTuber like me, and certainly not from some of these other YouTubers that are pointing to different types of affiliate links and courses that you got to sign up to and discords where you can become a quadzillionaire. The best place to go is directly going to the source. That being said, I do want to point out that if you go to Litecoin on CoinMarketCap and you actually click on the website, 
you will see that on the left hand side, they actually specify where the website is. If you click that website and no disrespect to whoever built this, but as a web designer and web developer, this is a really crappy website. And so if you really want to get to the website that has a lot more information, navigate over to where it says foundation, click that, and then you'll be led to the better Litecoin website where you can read about a lot of the aspects of Litecoin. And probably the most interesting part of this entire website is the Litecoin projects page where you can learn about a lot of the different projects that are taking place with Litecoin. Also, they have a new section here. So if you're an investor in Litecoin, especially if your Litecoin bag is quite heavy, you definitely want to visit the new section here often and get the news straight from the foundation. They are a pretty accurate source of what's going on in the Litecoin space. So before finishing this video, I want to be fully transparent about my thoughts on Litecoin and whether I personally am invested in Litecoin. The truth is I do not hold any Litecoin. I do hold a significant amount of Bitcoin. And the reason I don't go into Litecoin is because there's not enough of a strong argument for me to part ways with my Bitcoin investment in order to invest in Litecoin. And I am also much more bullish about some of the other cryptos. That being said, I do not have a large amount of capital because luckily for me, about half a year ago, bought a house, have a mortgage. If I had more cash on hand and I wanted to really have a robust, diversified crypto portfolio, I probably would have a couple of grand in Litecoin just for diversity's sake. But I just feel like there's a lot more potential in some of the other cryptos at the moment, at least. Now, with that being said, Litecoin does have a very loyal community and you never know in the space of crypto. It is such a crazy world and it sometimes doesn't make sense. It just takes a couple of celebrities. It just takes a couple of Reddit groups, a couple of really popular YouTubers to start really getting behind a Litecoin project. And believe it or not, even a dinosaur coin like Litecoin can become a meme coin later on. It's happened before. Even if you look at the stock market space during the pandemic, when AMC, GME, even BlackBerry went flying, a lot of people were turning these OG stocks, these OG companies that are struggling into these meme stocks that were just blowing the roof off the place and making people rich. And so it's not to say that that can't happen with Litecoin. Now, sure, it's not as talked about as some of these other top 10 or top 20 cryptos, and there's not a tremendous amount of hype behind it. But that doesn't mean that it's not a worthy coin to keep an eye on. With that being said, I really appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, go ahead, hit the subscribe button so that you could be notified when I release new videos. And the last thing I wanna mention is don't just keep an eye on your crypto portfolio. Please keep an eye on your mental health. Don't get too stressed out. I know it's exciting times in the crypto world, but keep a balanced perspective. Spend time with your loved ones, your friends, your family, and put things into perspective of what is important and what isn't important. And with that being said, I wish you guys a tremendous amount of success, peace of mind, and hopefully I'll see some of you in the next video.